My name is Patrick Doyle and I'm an author and I'm the founder of Haunted Hoax. Um, I first got interested in the paranormal around the age of 12 when I had a, a pretty frightening experience of my own in the basement of my house. Ever since then I've been doing a lot of research and most of the research that I do ends up in the books that I write. But um, it's also helped me kind of figure out the tricks some people use to uh, fabricate evidence and post on the web. Prior to the 1906 earthquake, there were nearly two dozen cemeteries within the city of San Francisco. Now, there are only two. I'm in the National Cemetery in the Presidio. You just make out Alcatraz between those two trees behind me. So what did they do with over 200,000 bodies? To make room for the growing population of San Francisco, they are actually dug up and moved south to the city of Colma. So are all these houses built on old cemeteries haunted? Of course they are. I just saw a leprechaun in that tree. There's some fairies over that bush there. Sorry, little guy. But it makes for a great story. And that's what I would do if I was faking a video. I'd create this elaborate backstory, something to really draw you in and get your attention. This house doesn't sit on top of a graveyard, but it has 150 years of history and makes for a great stage for the videos I'm going to show you. I want to start with a beginner's level trick, but it's one that I see a lot and I'm still surprised that people fall for it. Hmm. As you can tell from the audio, I'm not using top of the line equipment here. I do this for two reasons. The first, I can't afford it. I'm not getting paid for doing this. The second is to demonstrate just how easy it is to fabricate evidence by just using a simple digital camera and everyday items. I shoot all my videos alone using just this one camera. No one is ever off frame. And the only props I'll ever use are safety pins. These little eye screws here. Some rope. Fishing line. And most important, your imagination. It's obvious how I did that. All I do is attach one of these little eye screws to the bottom of the door, tie on my fishing line, go back behind the camera, and give it a pull. But I also want to give you some other stuff to look for, like this loose door. By taking a second loop of fishing line here, if I could find the end, putting it over the doorknob, and then going back behind the camera, and just give it a little tug. Sounds like the doorknob is turning, and the latch is coming undone. But also take notice of the angle of the shot. Now I'm 6'1", about 200 pounds, but with the camera off to the side there, I can just easily hide inside. And ooh, I'm a ghost. I recently came upon a series of 
videos on YouTube about a little girl haunting a pantry in, in the kitchen. If you go to YouTube and just type in haunted pantry, you'll see the ones I mean. And the one thing that I noticed, other than the angle of the shot, is um, the bottom, the floor area of the pantry has been totally cleared out. And if uh, someone small enough was hiding in there, after the door opened the, and the camera pulls in, that person could have easily slipped in underneath, in underneath there. And then as the camera comes down, that person could sneak underneath the camera. So just be aware of that when you're watching these videos. Because if your closets or pantries are anything like mine, you notice they're loaded with stuff. So just look for those little things. Look for the angles. Look for clearing of stuff that where people can hide. And most importantly, just question these. Don't fall for them. This one took a little bit more work, not to mention my fabulous acting and fancy footwork. So you already know how the door opens. I had the line tied to the bottom of the door, and it's strung up underneath the sheets, and I gave it a pull, and that opened the door. Now to get it to close, I strung a second line underneath the sheets, along the door, through an eye screw, then around this leg of the table here, and back over and attached to the door. So by pulling that, it just closed the door. What can I say about orbs? If they were sound, they'd be nails dragged across the chalkboard. If they were a smell, they'd be rotten eggs. So there are so many pictures and videos of orbs out there, you shouldn't be allowed to call them paranormal anymore. The truth is, light reflects off everything. Water, dust, insects, minty fresh breath, a one-eyed cat scampering through the woods, that little bit of spit that flies from your mouth sometimes when you speak. All right, I have four examples of orbs here for you. This first one, I took in Washington DC and as you can see we got three orbs hanging out with this picture of my wife got one over here next to her and then two along the path but if you look at the path there it's like soaking wet this is dead of winter in in Washington DC so these two these three orbs here are actually snowflakes and the second one here was taken in Hilo and we got this really bright orb right up in here. Now, is this an orb or is it a tree spirit? No, it's, if you know anything about Hilo, it's extremely wet and rainy. I mean, you can look at the, the branches here and they're soaking wet. And the truth is, there's always water in there. There's some percentage of water in there. It's humidity. So if you're tromping around in the graveyard at 2 in the morning, you're kicking up all that moisture in the grass and bugs as well, which are going to reflect that light. The third example here was taken indoors. I took this in a uh, in a pub in in Dublin. It's a really old building, as you can tell. And then we have a bunch of little faint orbs down there, and then two nice bright ones up here in the corner. <clears throat> but this this is a club, and there was music playing upstairs and downstairs, as well as people walking around and going up and down the stairs. So I'm pretty sure this is just dust, which you'll find in every old building, even well, new buildings as well. And the fourth example is a special, special photo. So I took this in a graveyard in Dublin, and you'll, it's obvious, you'll see the one giant bright orb there hanging out over the grave, and it's, it's like 
you can see through it there. It looks kind of has like a couple eyes right there, maybe a nose. But what makes this orb special is that it will answer your questions. So we'll go, hey, Mr. Orb, are you a ghost? Oh, you are. Say, you alone there in the graveyard? No. Who's there with you? Oh, look at that. Then all of a sudden we have Orb Dance Party. And this photo started with this guy here. And this is an orb. It took me less than a minute to create this guy in Photoshop. And with this, I could like make him as bright as I want. And then I could even change his shape if I wanted to. Let's see, I make him smaller, bigger. And then from that, I could drop him on any photograph or video. So unless that orb flies into the window, circles you twice, and then spells out its name in the air like a sparkler, please keep it off the web, because we can't continue to fixate on shiny objects. So if evidence is so easy to fake, what are we left with? The answer, my friend, is trust. Now there are a number of paranormal groups out there who only release evidence after running it through filters of science and logic. But for every honest paranormal group, there are about 10 who are trying to fool you. So just be aware when you're looking around out there and continue to ask yourself, did it really happen? Did I just want it to happen? Or did someone make it happen? So until next time, happy haunting. On the next Haunted Hoax, I'll examine video evidence of a picture frame which moves in a Gettysburg Inn. Was it the ghost of a fallen soldier, or just a trick of the living? I'll examine this video while exploring the ruins of Fort Berry, home of the disappearing guns.